What is up CISSP wannabes? These are the CISSP questions of the day, where each day I give you not one, but two questions to ponder uh, as you continue to study for your CISSP exam. Uh, I am Colin Weaver, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. In the world of software development, uh, software testing is typically broken into three broad categories. We have white box testing, black box testing, and gray box testing. What's one of the key differences between white box and black box testing? Now, there's a bunch of different stuff, a bunch of different answer choices for you to go in and look at. So go ahead and click pause, give those a read, think about it, and then when you're ready, click play and we'll talk it through. Gray box testing is really a combination of white box testing and black box testing, and it's not really focused on this question, so we won't worry about it. Now, when you look at black box testing versus white box testing, sometimes black box testing is referred to as functional testing, and sometimes white box testing is referred to as structural testing. Now, I liken this to the idea of if you're shopping for a house and you're walking through the house and you're looking at the, uh, the way the house is laid out and, and asking yourself basically, does this work? Can I live here? That's more functional kind of stuff of, you know, does this work for me as sort of the user of this home? If you're looking at things more from a structural perspective, you're kind of looking at the inner workings. What's going on behind the scenes? Um, how, what's going on with the electrical, with the plumbing? Uh, what's going on in you know, the way the house itself is actually constructed? That's, that's a, more, a more rigorous analysis. And so you kind of have these different perspectives in terms of what they're trying to accomplish. So uh, black box testers are typically not going to have access to any of the source code, any of the behind the scenes internals of what's going on. Uh, in a lot of respects, a black box tester is just a person who's responsible for testing the functionality of the software and doing sort of quality assurance kinds of things of, you know, does the software work? Uh, if you look at how white box testers approach this, these are people who typically have programming skill, they have programming knowledge, they also have access to the source code and can go in and look at the internal details of how the software is working. Now, black box testing has several different advantages. One is if you have just a, a giant amount of code, it's a lot easier to go in and test things because the focus is more on does it work, not necessarily you know, all the inner details of how that code is actually functioning. Uh, it also focuses a lot on the user's experience. You know, Does the software work for the way that the user is, is actually gonna need to or want to go in and make use of it? Other benefits include the fact that the code that the software uh, tester for black box testing doesn't require you know any any particular coding skill or knowledge. Uh, they also don't have to have access to the source code, which kind of makes sense since they don't you know, understand the source code anyway. A key disadvantages of black box testing is that it doesn't test the internal structure. It doesn't test all the different uh, code possibilities, and you don't have good code coverage. It simply tests what the user interface supports the user doing and the inputs that the user might put in, which kind of also dovetails in with the whole idea that you have limited coverage. You know, again, it's, you're, you're only testing what, what the user is actually able to, to do with the software. Um, if there's an interface that doesn't provide them the ability to interact with it in some way, then obviously they, there's, there's code they can't touch and um, that, that, that's a key disadvantage that you're gonna have for that. Now, white box testing is much more focused on the internal structure of the software, and really this is about you know, the source code and going in and looking at the way that the code uh, is written and the way that the code behaves. It's much less focused on any kind of functionality of the software, focusing instead on putting us through its paces from an internal structure perspective. Now, the benefits of white box testing is that you're gonna get much better coverage of all the different code that's in there, so the developers are gonna be able to put that code through its paces and check all of the different possibilities uh, and make sure that as, as, you, as you move through all the you know, you know, if-then kind of statements that, and loops that may exist within the code, you get to test all of those. Uh, so you have really good code coverage. One of the other benefits is that it's much better in going in and finding errors. And so if there are errors that are hidden that something uh, may not be able to be exploited or identified in a, in a user interface scenario, uh, by being able to have access to the backend code, you're gonna be able to more easily identify those and, and, and weed them out. And then one of the key disadvantages of uh, white box testing is that it doesn't identify missing features. Uh, it only tests what's there. It doesn't look for anything extra. Um, and so, you know, whereas, you know, uh, functionality testing may go in and help you identify things that the software needs, this doesn't, because the, the whole focus of white box testing is to go in and look at um, what's, what's already there, not on, on what should be added. So taking all of those different things into account, if you look back at our answer choices, what we can see is that uh, white box testers have access to the source code. That's the best answer. All right, here's question number two. Software prototyping, we're sticking with the world of software development today, uh, was developed in response to some of the shortcomings of the waterfall method of software development. 
and prototyping is focused on going in and creating success successive iterations of a piece of software, focusing on its functionality, and then getting feedback from the users or the testers to go in and create increasingly more refined versions of the product. Now, there are several different benefits to this approach. These are potential choices of what those benefits are. So click pause, give them a read, and then when you're ready, click play and we'll talk it through. Now, in a real general sense, the whole prototyping model can be broken up into four basic phases. The first of which is to go in and identify what the requirements of the software are. Uh, the second step is to go in and build a prototype. In the third step of the prototype model, what you would do is go in and give it to the user, let them use it, let them play with it, and then give you feedback. And then based on that feedback, you would revise the prototype, which would be step four. And then after you revise the prototype, you go back to step three, get more feedback from the user, and then go to step four. And you do that for however many iterations are necessary in order to go in and produce the product um, as a finished piece that's going to be valuable and usable to the customer or to the client. Now, there are lots of benefits to going in and doing this. Uh, one of them is that you get feedback from the user, from the customer, much earlier in the process. Uh, it also allows you to go in and identify you know, defects in the software, things that simply aren't going to work earlier in the process as well. Now, that's going to have the end result of reducing the, 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 the time and the cost associated with going in and trying to fix things on a piece of software that's already completed. Now, and the big benefit of that is that it's going to go in and allow you to identify these, uh, these shortcomings of the software much earlier in the development process uh, because if you were to completely finish the software and then try and go in and do these change orders uh, on a completed piece of code, uh, then it's going to be significantly more expensive both in money and in time to go in and do that. Uh, the other thing is that you have the benefit of increased user involvement. There's better communication between the developers and the users. Uh, there's, there's a capacity to reduce miscommunications, you know, versus, you know, identifying what did I say versus what did I mean, and, and the, the potential miscommunications that can occur as a result of that. Uh, and then the user's more involved in giving the developer feedback along the way, which if the end result is that the software needs to be functional and user, usable to that person or to that group, then that's a good thing. Software prototyping does have some disadvantages, one of which is the potential for a lack of focus on the bigger picture, uh, incomplete analysis of what the software needs to do as a whole because the focus is on going in and creating an individual prototype that focuses, say, on just a handful of features. One of the other potential problems that can happen is, is there can end up being some confusion with the user about the differences between the prototype and the finished product. For instance, there may be things that are built into a prototype that don't make it into the finished product, but the user liked those features, uh, but for whatever reason, they didn't get included in the final code. Um, so that can cause some, some confusion and or disappointment with the user. One of the big disadvantages of software prototyping is the whole idea of feature creep, where you get, in effect, too much feedback from the users, and they go in and say, oh, I'd like it if it did this, if it did this, if it did this, and then you keep adding things in, and, and it distrays you from the, the core functionality of what the system's supposed to be doing, and also has a tremendous capacity, if you run into this, of increasing the time and cost, which is going to cause you to you know, you know, not be able to deliver the product in the agreed upon time, and it's going to cause you to have to go way over the budget that was uh, earmarked for the development of the project as well. So uh, feature creep can be a big problem with, with prototyping. And that kind of stuff kind of all ties in. Again, that there's too much, uh, too much feedback and too, much, uh, you know, too many successive iterations going on with the customer, then it, it can cause you to have issues with budget as well as with the delivery time of the product. So given that and looking at the answer choices that are here, the best answers are missing functionality can be more quickly identified. Defects can be identified earlier, reducing the time and cost of development. And the third answer is user feedback is quicker, allowing necessary changes to be identified sooner. All right, so there you have it. That was two questions today in the world of software development. Uh, the first went in and focused on the differences between white box and black box testing. And the second went in and kind of focused on what the pros and cons are of prototype software development. Uh, I hope you found these questions uh, helpful for you as you continue your study. If you did, please go ahead and, and, and mash on that like button for me. I'll appreciate it. Uh, if you want to get these questions every single day, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow.